जननी शारदा देवी रामकृष्ण जगद्गु पादपद्मे तयोश्रिवा प्रणमा मुहुर्मु It was the day of new moon. Gradually, night descended, and dense darkness enveloped the trees and the temples. A few lights shone here and there in the temple garden. The black sky was reflected in the waters of the Ganga. the master went master went to the veranda south of his room a spiritual mood was the natural state of his mind the dark night of new moon associated with the black complexion of kali the divine mother intensified his spiritual exaltation now and then he repeated om and the name of kali he lay down on the mat and whispered to him the whole atmosphere how it was new moon dark night slowly it was evening when they were all talking and slowly night fell the whole thing is covered with darkness darkness deep in darkness and the dark night the sky is being reflected in the river now the whole picture is transporting us actually to the those days of how it was and how 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 much we can intensely feel what is happening there what was the atmosphere the because it is totally secluded place far away from the bustle of city even when i went in 1976 there were no shops around the trees and forest gardens and then panchavati was not fenced or anything it's so open we could climb up uh, and bow down and come and all this nature as it is natural things the whole dakshineshwar most of the things were unaltered and now it has become like a small city with number of shops and this and that every way papers are put on the floor it the nature it is very difficult to feel what was in those days but here we get the direct understanding and if anybody has seen earlier in the ending of the last century and the whole thing suppose you had gone to kailas mansarovar or some places or himalayan regions where lonely ashrama is there or the temple is there how the atmosphere will be that the imaginary understanding it matches with the dark nights when i was in forest i could not see light anywhere it is nature as it is a very phase of moon will be influencing our mind every every day the amavasya is nearing the waning away of the moonlight and we we are in the other phase uh, waxing of moon 
little by little, every day one digit increases. It gives an entirely different mood. Every day the mood changes, looking at the moon. Our movements are restricted, our movements are activated at night. We have to go to the stream, Every for everything we have to go to the stream. There is no water connection, the tap and this, anything that we see in here. So, we used to just, in the forest, as nothing, a small kutia made of mud and bamboo, whose forest is miles of miles, thick forest, as it is virgin forest. The felling also was not done when I stayed. But the influence of nature, to live with nature and how nature influences. In every moment, the rainy season is entirely different from the summer and winter. Our bhavas change. Why festivals are associated with this? What particular dates or the particular ritu or particular month is uh, the particular devata, the festivity of the nature and festivity of man, the understanding, the particular thing is manifesting there. Shivaratri time, Shiva is manifesting as if. Durga Puja time, Durga is manifesting with nature. Nature is pro protecting that um, qualities. And you see perfect matching of the Chaitanya that is in the form of Devata and the nature, beautiful nature. And this is, is an important part. And when Thakur was there, there were no artificial lights of this type. Only small lamps, oil lamps, even night functions and all. Uh, huge, um, this one, uh, cloth covered to a stick dipped in oil would be burning in the end. Torches, fire torches used to burn here and there. When dances and performances, dramas, plays used to take place in the stage, so many torches would be burning all around. And this is how the nature, uh, we are missing the nature every day, every invention, every convenient, every comfort, uh, comfort that we are giving, getting is pushing us away from nature. Totally, we are in an artificial world of an imaginary understanding. So here we see, when we go, we are transported to those days when Thakur was there in the world. Hmm. Master went into to the veranda south of his room. A spiritual mood was the natural state of his mind. The dark night of the new moon associated with the black complexion of Kali, the Divine Mother, intensified his spiritual exaltation. He is naturally and the darkness mingled with darkness. Now and then he repeated Om and the name of Kali, the two aspects of creation. One is the substratum in which the whole universe appears. Kali is representation of the two ultimate realities existing, coexisting together. Mm. The Shiva and the Kali. Shiva is lying down, white marble always is used. Sh Shavarupa Shiva, immobile and substratum on which the nature is dancing the relative existence and the absolute existence. Shiva represents the absolute existence. The 
Kali represents the ever-changing universe and from where the universe appears and disappears, absolute. Now, whom refers to that? Kali refers to the entire universe in all its glory and all its manifestations. He lay on, the, on a mat and whispered to him, Night has fallen. Master, yes, God can be seen. X has had the, a vision of God. Somebody's name is, is not given here. Has had a vision of God. But don't tell anyone about it. Tell me, which do you like better? God with form or formless reality? Hmm. Master whispered to M. M is the author of this book. Hmm. And see, night is alone there with the master. And his master is telling all the secrets. Hmm. Don't tell about it to anybody. Let me. We, Tell me, which do you like better, God with form or with formless reality? M. Sir, nowadays I like to think God with, without form. But I am also beginning to understand that, God is, that it is God alone who manifests himself through different forms. The, Great trial, changes take place in every person, even present days, who goes through the gospel of Sri Ramakrishna or Master's life, you see undergoing tremendous transformation. Because all the ideas and understanding that we have got regarding God from our birth is going to get transformed into a very highly refined perfection. We are just at the, all through we have been at the very low level of kindergarten. Kindergarten, you will have the basics entering just, you are keeping foot in it. Now, Sri Ramakrishna is going to take to the university level, stage by stage, one by one grade, you will be passing and reaching the higher levels. Each contact, each reading gives a new understanding of God, new understanding of this world, new understanding of your own self. The transformation, transformation of the whole understanding of God. Now he is also undergoing, he liked the Advaita concepts, M, non-dual, but he now he is slowly understanding. Finally, his God has become everything. God is unlimited. Master, will you take me in a carriage someday to Mati Seal's garden house at Bulgaria? When you throw puffed rice into the lake, there, the fish come out, come to the surface and eat. Ah, I feel so happy to see them sport in, in the water. They will awaken your spiritual consciousness too. You will feel as if the fish, as if the fish of the human soul were playing in the ocean of Satchidananda. In the same manner, I go into ecstatic mood when I stand in big meadow. I feel like fish released from the bowl into the lake. Mm. Now, every soul has a particular nature. The nature has to get linked to the divine. I have a particular nature. 
it must be linked to the divine. It is dormant state, it has to be awakened. Now Sri Ramakrishna is trying to awaken the inner stuff in him. And he is specifically asking to go to a particular place, take him to a particular place. Then the Guru and disciples are going together. And there he can show, indicate. And here very clearly he mentions, you see, will you take me in a carriage someday to Matisse Seals garden house at Bulgaria? When you throw puffs into the lake, there the fish come to the surface to eat it. Ah, I feel happy to see them sport in water. That will awaken your spiritual consciousness too. Awakening of spiritual consciousness. Somewhere there is a place, sometime there is a time, and is some something, some incident, something to happen, which is going to link you to the spiritual consciousness. Most of the people, they do sadhana, whole life they will be doing sadhana. And when they go to a particular place, they will be in pilgrimage or here or there, or they accidentally go to a place, and suddenly when they reach that spot, suddenly their spiritual consciousness is awakened. They have done so much of sadhana sitting in here or there places, Nowhere they could get. There is a place and a time when it will happen and a particular incident to go on. So that is what we see in Sri Ramakrishna. He is still asking him to take, not that Sri Ramakrishna's spiritual consciousness is going to be awakened or Sri Ramakrishna is going to enjoy the uh, fish sporting in water. Bhajna, uh, Yajishwanaji Maharaj used to tell these exercises for uh, meditation. Imagine yourself to a fish in the vast, limitless ocean uh, and a bird in the vast sky. Think yourself and flying. Identify with that bird totally. Drop away your identity of this bodily existence and be flying. Be swimming in that water like fish. This is what we see here. Hmm. I go into ecstatic mood, ecstatic mood when I stand at the big meadow. I feel like a fish released from the bowl into the into a lake. Spiritual discipline is necessary in order to see God. Spiritual consciousness awakening. After the awakening of spiritual consciousness, I am able to perceive, I am able to identify, I am able to penetrate into nature and identify the um, divine. To see God, there must be spiritual insight. It begins with spiritual understanding. Spiritual understanding. I get the spiritual understanding from the spiritual understanding originates spiritual insight. I each thing I see, I find the spiritual coexistence with this. I understand what is spiritual understanding is this. Spiritual insight you will be trying to see, penetrate, just like a photograph of a body and an extra photo of a person. X-ray photo reveals the bones within. Your ordinary photo picture, camera, will not give the bones picture, what is inside. It gives ex out external. So this difference is there between spiritual understanding and spiritual insight. From spiritual insight, we enter into spiritual awakening. Spiritual identification. Hmm. Spiritual 
discipline is necessary in order to see God. Spiritual disciplines are necessary. Spiritual consciousness, spiritual awakening, spiritual understanding. Then vision of God. Spiritual discipline is necessary in order to see God. Japa, dhyana, prayer. So whatever you can do, how you can utilize every one. The main thing is unbroken thought of divine. If there should not be a break. Anu sarana. Anu smarana. Without break following. A person or anything is moving, you are moving just behind at the same speed, in the same way. It is anusarana. Smarana it is not breaking. It is continuing with the unbroken thought of God. Anusmarana. In what way can you hold on to the smarana of God? Whatever you can. Japa is there. Puja is there. One, one weapon or other, uh, immediately you are missing God, start praying. Uh, it's not next, immediately sing a bhajan, do japa, something or other to see that continuity of divine thought and divine awareness is unbroken. This is called spiritual disciplines. This, uh, I had to pass through very severe discipline. How many austerities I practiced under bell tree? Austerities, tapasya. Mm. Lot of. Mm. I lived in forest four and a half years. I have not wasted a single minute of that period. Always with God, struggling to be with God in an unbroken way, walking every step, I am conscious of God. Every step being offered to God, I am thinking something, every thought is being offered to God. Hmm. There is a separate identity that grows within of the sadhaka. Our Natural, normal identity, identity will dissolve. Sadhaka's identity is a different identity dwelling in the spiritual world and related to God alone. Our physical identity is living in the world and related or unrelated to, uh, I am not related with him, I am not, he is my friend, he is my enemy, all this relationship and there is no relationship, neutral, unknown person. Uh, all this we are having in the this world, but there it is in the spiritual world. Um, and you are identifying with a sadhaka who is aspiring for God. It is unrelated to, just like we enter into a dream, you are entirely different. You are unrelated to the waking state and body. Like that will be the state, awareness of the sadhaka. When you enter into ekanta, when you are there, uh, it is there, you are there in the world moving about, but that is not in your awareness. When we move about in the world, the world is in our awareness. Hmm. When we you enter into Ekanta and live with God, uh, God will be in our awareness. And the spiritual world, you will dwell in the spiritual world with God awareness. Dwell in the world with worldly awareness. Hmm. How many austerities I practiced? That is the practice. Go on. Austerities means tapas, uh, sitting for long hours without breaking the thought of God. Uh, change the mood. Entirely you can change. Now you are playing with God. Now you are sitting and meditating. 
now you are observing now you are giving bath now you are feeding god something or other always related to god all everything becomes the spiritual discipline and austerities austerities is uh, facing all arts of life pains and sufferings losses inserts everything what comes in the physical world and what comes in the world internal world with extra efforts to bear and prepare for the higher the mortification of body in tapasya there is mortification of body i deprive myself of one food one meal suppose when i was i used to sit for ekanta in four months in chaturmasa i will take morning one uh, breakfast small quantity and afternoon one meal and again night one meal the meal will be just a sufficient to sustain my life hmm. and hmm, the whole thing i am deprived of all tastes and everything this is the tapas that i am taking up uh, i am denying bo- the time body mortification of body doing tapas this fasting uh, little food lagwashi all these are practices that i deny i don't enjoy anything i don't use a pillow and a base to lie down no mat directly will sleep on the ground mm. to take up the hardship to give hearts and be na- not against nature how does the animals sleep you see okay. they sleep wherever the place is there they go monkeys in the on the trees mm. hardship how they face that kind of tapas to minimum give the body it's don't give comforts don't give luxuries and make it survive peacefully joyfully and continue the life this is austerities om shanti 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 hari hi om tat sat shri ram krishna arpanamastu